Buffalo Wild Wings. How could you not like that logo? It is literally a buffalo with wings. I know, it's an obvious joke, but it works. Of course, buffaloes don't have wings. The food is thought to have been originated at this restaurant called Anchor Bar in Buffalo, New York. The actual stories vary, but the name comes from the town, not the animal. And today, more than 50 years later, one of the largest sellers of buffalo wings is, in fact, Buffalo Wild Wings. They have over 1,200 locations all across the United States. They were pretty much the first to implement the wing-based restaurant concept in a major way and still today remain bigger than any of the others that do it. Even if you haven't been there, you've probably heard their slogan, Wings Beer Sports, which I think is a great description. It's practically your typical sports bar with TVs all over the place, but they are family friendly as well. And they have had an eventful history. I'm going to be talking about things that you wouldn't have even imagined. I'll be highlighting two significant rises and falls that they've experienced with a potential potential third rise. But before I get to all of that, I have to take a minute to talk about Jim Dispro because I don't think you will ever hear another story quite like his. When he was a young kid in the 1950s, he suffered from polio, and as a way to strengthen his legs, he started ice skating. It quickly became more than a hobby, to where when he was 11 years old, he moved in with his figure skating coaches, who happened to be a married couple with a younger son named Scott Lowry, so Jim pretty much became a member of that family. Soon after, he won the silver medal in the junior men's division of the U.S. Figure Skating Championships, two years later was an alternate for the U.S. Olympic team, and after his competitive career, he spent two years touring with a famous skating show called Holiday on Ice. I know, it seems like I'm way off topic, but trust me, it's about to come together. In the 1970s, he moved to Buffalo, New York, where he was a frequent customer of Anchor Bar. That is when he became a huge fan of the buffalo wings that they had originated, as well as the other local foods of the area. Then, in the early 1980s, he was in Columbus, Ohio with his good friend and practically brother Scott Lowry. They were looking for a place where they can go and eat some of those tasty buffalo wings, but were surprised to learn that they couldn't find a single place in the area that served them. At first, they were upset about it, but they saw an opportunity. The following year, they opened their own restaurant in Columbus, Ohio, strategically placed near Ohio State University called Buffalo Wild Wings and Weck. I'll admit, I've never heard of Weck until just just now, but it turns out it's this German roll with seeds on it where in Buffalo, New York, they use it as a bun to make roast beef sandwiches. Sort of another local favorite, so really all they did here was take some of the foods that they liked that weren't available in the area and made them available in the area. Much like that logo, the idea was obvious, but it worked. The name was a little long though, so the customers started calling it BW3 and the company embraced it. Early on, they advertised their extensive variety of 12 different wing sauces and 50 different different beers. They also wanted to keep affordable prices, and that was made possible by various cost-cutting measures, such as using paper plates so they wouldn't have to hire somebody to wash them. So given their unique menu, variety, affordable prices, and strategic location, Buffalo Wild Wings and Weck was a big success. By the early 90s, they were able to open six more locations around the area, and that is when they started franchising. If you were able to give them $20,000, a percentage of your sales, and promise to use their signature wing sauces, there was a good chance that you'd be approved to open your own location. Obviously, with this new model in place, they were able to start opening locations faster than ever, and that is where things started to go bad. And I think the biggest reason for this first fall, to put it simple, is that Jim Disbro got a little in over his head. I wanted to talk about his figure skating career because it really seemed like that was his bigger talent, and probably what he cared about the most. I mean, despite being co-founder, president, and CEO, CEO of a rapidly growing restaurant franchise, he was still heavily involved in the sport. Just to help show the extent, in 1994, there was this famous incident involving skaters Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding. I don't want to get too far into that. You can watch the movie I, Tanya if you want to hear more about it, but he was in the news along with it because he was the chairman of the committee that had part in determining whether or not Tanya Harding would be able to compete in the Olympics that were about a month away. And then beyond that, for the next Olympics, he was the team manager of the U.S. figure skating team before 
before becoming the president of the US Figure Skating Association. Then, tragically, it was diagnosed with brain cancer that ultimately killed him four and a half years later at the age of 54. But going back to 1994, I don't know if he was preoccupied with Tanya Harding and his responsibilities over there, or if he simply didn't know how to run a company like this, but Buffalo Wild Wings was not being managed very well. I have to imagine that the franchisee selection was questionable. They didn't have a consistent brand, different locations had slightly different names, but maybe worst of all was that they didn't even keep up with their basic accounting. You may have noticed that I have yet to provide any sales figures or anything else, and that is because no one knows what they were. Jim Disbro himself couldn't have told you much about it because they weren't keeping accurate track of anything, which is essential for creditors and the government. They couldn't even figure out how much they owed in taxes, and it was looking like that might have been the end of things. Thankfully, Jim Disbro realized that he needed help, so he brought in Sally Smith. She had been the chief financial officer of a hearing aid company in Minneapolis for more than a decade, and she was hired as their new CFO to help clean up their finances. In fact, they relocated their headquarters to Minneapolis around this time, partially to help convince Sally Smith to accept the position. In her first year there, she was able to calculate that the company had lost $1.6 million over that time. Since Jimmy Disbro may not have been the best CEO, he then chose to step down and allow Sally to take over that position. And it was under her control that Buffalo Wild Wings was able to grow into a nationally recognized brand. In 1998, they adopted the name Buffalo Wild Wings for all of their locations, and the consistency in the name allowed for a national advertising campaign a few years later. In 2003, they became a public company for the first time, allowing them to pay off a lot of their debt and open more locations. I mean, you can see how fast they were growing over this time. Less than 100 locations when she took over, to over 1,200 exactly 20 years later. And by the way, over this time, every single year was more profitable than the one before it. But then, more trouble, and thankfully, they were keeping track of their finances here, so I do have some numbers to show it. In the nine-month period ending September 2017, they had earned significantly less money than that same nine-month period the year before, which was mostly due to higher costs, but their sales were suffering too. They reported negative same-store sales when compared to the same quarters from the year before. As for the higher costs, the biggest contributor there would be the price that they had to pay for chicken wings. I don't know exactly how it all works, but the demand for wings had been growing, and the chickens weren't hatching like they were supposed to, I guess, so it caused a shortage and the prices went up. In 2016, they were paying $1.72 a pound, and then all of a sudden, the following year, it went up to $2.16 a pound. As for the lower sales, Sally Smith theorized that a big part of it was the fact that their younger, target customers were becoming more likely to eat at home rather than at a restaurant. Which makes sense, it's been an issue within the industry. Buffalo Wild Wings certainly hasn't been the only restaurant struggling. Another reason there could be the competition. The entire idea behind the restaurant stemmed from the fact that no one else was serving wings, and they were among the first of their kind in many areas across the country. But now, many others have followed their lead, providing more options for the customers. I'm just saying, as time goes by, it seems that there's more and more places to find chicken wings. Another issue could be sports viewership. Many of those numbers have been down, especially with the NFL, which can mean bad things for a sports bar. Even if someone does want to watch the sports games. The sports packages and 4K TVs make them much easier to watch at home than ever before. And on top of all of this, to potentially make things even worse, there was a big proxy fight happening behind the scenes at Buffalo Wild Wings. This guy Mick McGuire and his firm had become a big investor in the company, but he didn't approve of the way that Sally Smith was responding to the troubles. He felt that the answer was to sell their company-owned locations to free up capital and become more heavily franchised. It wasn't happening like he wanted, so he called for her to be removed from her position, which after some shareholder votes, she said that she would step down. If nothing else, this conflict was distracting and the opposing viewpoints made it hard to make any major changes. Then, in late 2017, Arby's agreed to buy Buffalo Wild Wings for $2.9 billion. They felt that the brand was still strong and they'd be able to create some efficiencies between the two chains. Actually, Arby's had recently made their own comeback, so I'm guessing there was some confidence in that they'd be able to repeat something similar. They renamed the combined 
restaurant company Inspire Brands, who went on to acquire some other notable restaurant chains, and this is where the potential rise again comes in, but honestly, it's hard to say. Inspire Brands is a private company, so none of the figures have been available to the public following this acquisition. But if I had to take a guess, I would say that there probably has been some improvement, because they have addressed some of their issues. For one, just the fact of becoming a private company could have been really helpful. They no longer had all the stock market investors demanding these short-term returns, they now had time to implement a long-term, well-thought-out plan. They have also learned that it's not ideal to be so reliant on one product, like chicken wings, where the prices could fluctuate so much. So they have made efforts to expand their menu beyond them. Even before the acquisition, they changed their promotions to try to push the customers toward the boneless wings, because they're actually made from the chicken breast. Wingstop started doing the same thing, not to mention all of these other new menu items, like the all-American cheeseburger. They have also tried to address the fact that more people prefer to eat at home by emphasizing their to-go menu and even going as far as starting B-Dubs Express. It's a quicker, smaller location meant for takeout orders, though it hasn't become too significant to their business. Let me know in the comments, do you think that they've been making a comeback or are things continuing to go downhill? And for the bigger picture, what do you think of them in general? I mean, as a potential customer, how do they compare to Wingstop or one of the others? And finally, what do you think of Jim Dispro? Was I right in saying that his story is unlike anything you've heard before? And any other thoughts about Buffalo Wild Wings or Arby's or anything else I talked about in this video, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.